Have you ever felt overwhelmed by the stock market's unpredictability? In this video, I'm going to debunk the common myths surrounding fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the stock market. Here's the problem in a nutshell. It, it seems like, again, this is more sort of post-pandemic stuff where it's like we don't quite understand other... Yeah. When you are worried about stagflation, even though I think the market will be fine today, but when you're worried about it, if Who's you are... worried about Some stagflation? people, we talk about what? Steve Leisman is spitting facts, and Joe Kernan is really trying to kill it with fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Keep watching. This happens several times. What, what, but if you are, but if you are, but if you are, either either side of this it becomes a problem. If it's too strong, you're worried about inflation. If it's too weak, you're worried about a slowdown. I, I don't know where the stagflation problem comes from. I, I don't see it. I don't it, think it's here. I think it 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 comes from the, the notion that we get stuck at three for inflation. Right. That, therefore, the Fed is, is unable to ease. Wasn't stagflation born when inflation was 10? It was a misery index. Wasn't that the stag There's a misery index of like 25. It was like 25, right? What's the misery index now? Like six? It's like historically low. So why are we worried about stagflation? Because there's plenty of room for it to go up. How do you as an investor navigate this kind of stuff? Just constant fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And as you watch this, you'll understand why. I just a misery. In I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't see this. I, I think I said this we before. We talk about it every day. Jamie but, Dimon talks about it. Everybody talks about it. But, but I think I said this before, Powell. I don't see the stag or, the fl or really much flation at all. You're, you're a point over. That's important. It's something to talk about. But it's not Argentina. Well, it's you haven't not, seen the stag, you haven't seen the stag, stag yet, right. but you started to see the, in the GDP. You got one well, number. Haven't we been talking and hoping for a weaker economy from the strength that we've had? We had the ultimate Goldilocks where we had inflation coming down in the, the economy and jobs staying strong. And now it's flip-flopped. And now you're worried so about- Wouldn't it be awful to be living through great times and not recognize it? Great times always come You would just it. miss it. You, you, you would just You don't like, want to be sitting there like- Oh my God, when be, things got bad, you'd be like, well, that was great before. You don't want to be whistling past the graveyard. I mean, I get it, you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss if you're on the cusp of something that's going to- Be terrible. Right. Or at least going to be a change. I know, they're playing the music, but yeah. it's an interesting debate. Jeff. Have you- Are you really worried? Have you, you ever worried? read about the news business and what sells? Are you, are you doing this on purpose? I don't really care. Okay, yeah, apparently I, I, I not. A and there you have it. Did you ever read about the news business and what sells? What sells is fear, uncertainty, and doubt, not facts. Reputation of, Apparently of, not. of being sober about all sober. this. Sober. And in well, this I, world I, of extremity, maybe sober sells. <laughs> yeah, before news. Sober sells, Joe. I assume it's still happening. Thank you, Quick. Who has Oh, pilot? goodness. All right, when we come back with more than 870 pilot Flying J and 19 truck centers across America. So how should you react when the news media spreads FUD like you just saw and the markets react like this? Look at this. Here's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> boom. I'll just give Thursday a swipe here <laughs> and, then, and then Friday. So. What do you make of this? What do you do as an investor with this kind of information? So what if, you, what if you got scared and you sold your equities here or here? Or worse yet, let's go back to 2008 when investors really had something to be afraid of. Here you're looking at a young investor in red, and you'll notice there's a blue line right behind it, that followed the common wisdom, and was 100% invested in the S&P 500. Now, let's say they got really scared back here, and they watched their $100,000 savings fall by more than $50,000. So they decided to protect themselves by selling their holdings. So now you can see what happened. Market fell, they lost over 50 grand, they sold to protect themselves and locked in their losses. So what do they do? They sell their holdings right near the bottom. And, and they're too afraid to get back in, obviously, so they stay in cash. Now, to make matters worse, they didn't get back into the market until well after it started to recover. And you can see what happens here. They don't get back to their previous high watermark 
four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Call it nine or ten years later until they're back at their high water mark. Now, if you think this is a made up fantasy, think again. I was managing money for clients who were still afraid four years later in 2012. If you think I'm making this stuff up, just look at the average investor returns in these tables from various sources. Look at this. You can see the average investor returns over one year, three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, and 30 years. And you can see that the average equity investor returns are far less than the S&P 500. Really abysmal. Let's look at another one. Here's another one. This one's a little tough to see, but you can see the average investor down here with somewhat just over 2% annual rate of return over 20 years versus all of these other classes. What about this graph? Again, 2.1% average return from 1996 to 2015 versus the S&P 500 at 8.2% return. What about here? Very similar graph. You can see that investor returns were very much less than the S&P 500. And then if we look here again, you can see the S&P 500, 9.5%, average investor, 3.6%. Another reason these results are so bad is because typical investors spread their assets all over the place instead of really diversifying. Watch my two videos linked in the pinned comments below if you want to learn how to create a diversified portfolio that doesn't kill your long-term returns. My advice to you if you find yourself in this situation like our friend here back in 2008 is to stock up on Xanax, but don't take it, and ride out the storm at least until you get back to your previous high water mark, like this. With all that being said, Let's take a look at what the charts and metrics are telling us right now about the current state of the markets. So if we take a look back over the past week, as you could see in the Think or Swim chart I showed you earlier, the market really had a rough ride here. It dropped at the beginning of the week, went up, pulled back, continued up and finished the week higher with a fairly healthy appetite for risk. What if we look back over the past month? Well, you can see it bottomed out back here. And ever since then, the markets have been moving higher, even though most of the indices are still underwater for the last month. What about year to date? Well, year to date, um, well, we're kind of somewhat in a healthy relationship here. You've got the NASDAQ and S&P up here at the top, small caps in the Dow in the middle, and ARK Invest has absolutely been pummeled. So it's not doing well. <laughs> And then if we look back over the past year, you can see that in general, the markets are all up. The NASDAQ's leading the way. ARC is in second place, so this is good. S&P third. And then the Dow and small caps are kind of tied for last place here. So this is still fairly healthy looking. Now let's take a look at the current bottom dynamics. Well, if we take a look here, there's really no tell. You can see that the bottom confirmation signal is flat. And the bottom forming signal is flat. The only things that are moving here are the confidence level, which you can see is falling, and the price is rising. I really can't make much out of this, so we'll just have to see what happens going forward. If we look at risk versus opportunity, this is, again is a mixed up picture because you can see that risk acceleration, which is the first place I look, is up here in the stratosphere. It's a it's up here above 85, I think it's at 86, and heading higher, that's really ugly, to be honest. But then you look at the opportunity acceleration, which yes, it's down here at a level of roughly 30 or so, but it's heading higher as well. So that's kind of a conflict, doesn't make sense. And you can see risk, the red line, moving higher, and you can see the opportunity level, the blue line, moving lower. What do you make of this? I don't know. Well, let's see if we get any information out of equity versus safety. So I'm going to go right to the overlay. And this is ugly. Uh, you don't want to see cash up here anywhere in the top half of this table. And it's in first place. And you can see that the NASDAQ 100 and small caps are right down here at the bottom. So is there a bright spot here? Well, let's take a look. If we look at this, the S&P 500 is staying solidly in seventh place. But the Dow 
is has moved up to fourth place. So investors are willing to take risk, but they're only willing to take risk with safer equities. That's not what I call a healthy risk appetite. And what if we take a look at safe haven assets? Well, if you think inflation's a problem, think again. Look at what gold has done. It's plummeted from first place all the way down to sixth. Now, cash again is in first place. Short duration treasuries and intermediates are in second and third. 20-year bonds are here in fifth, and the longest duration treasuries have pulled back. Now, that may not be because they pulled back. It may be because other things have displaced them, like the Dow moving up. So that would have pushed this back. And what if we take a look at the buying and selling pressure? Well, this gives a little bit better of a picture here because you can see that uh, the buying pressure started increasing back here when the Dow bottomed. And it has been increasing ever since. So the buying pressure is increasing, selling pressure is decreasing, and the price is going up. This looks great. What about the S&P 500? Same picture. Buying pressure increasing while the price is increasing. The NASDAQ 100, same picture. Increasing buying pressure, increasing price. And small caps, same picture. Increasing buying pressure, increasing price. What about ARK Invest? Same thing increasing buying pressure, increasing prices. So this looks good. And hopefully this will continue and we'll get a nice rally into next week. Now let's take a look at the sector rankings. And I'm going to take a quick look at these sector rankings because they don't move very quickly. They kind of give you a very delayed view of where we're at. So if you look at last week, you can see consumer discretionary was down here, staples up here. You can see that this week, they've both moved up, so not much to say there. But cash has also moved up, which is not good. Gold is still kind of stuck here, even though on equity versus safety, it's pulled back quite a bit. And we can see that ARK Innovation is right down here at the bottom. So this isn't a great look, and, and the NASDAQ 100 has kind of stayed put right here. So not really much information here. Let's take a look at sector rank acceleration. Well, if we look here, uh, this tells a pretty ugly story. Actually, cash was down here, and now it's moved up here, kind of like in equity versus safety. And gold has plummeted, very much like equity versus safety. Now, what's kind of a conflict here is consumer discretionary has moved all the way from down here to all the way up here. Uh, that, that is actually good. Uh, if we take a look at ARK Innovation, that fell back up one place here. The NASDAQ was all the way down here and it's moved up a bit. So there is some positive movement here, but there's also some really negative stuff going on. In fact, the, the fact that consumer staples and utilities are in first and second place here is pretty ugly. And speaking of treasuries, how have they been doing? Well, you can see right here that they finished the week very, very nicely. The longest duration treasuries EDV finished up the most, up 2%. The 20 years are finished in second, up 1.33%. This is starting to look like a very healthy risk appetite for long duration treasury. What about over the past month? Well, over the past month, it, it was really pretty ugly back here, but you can see that uh, treasuries have started to rally back. And, and you can see that the slope on the longest duration ones, this purple line, is much steeper than the shorter duration treasuries here, which is what you would expect. What if we look at year to date? Well, year to date, we're kind of not far off the bottom here, but at least we're moving in the right direction. And then if we look back over the past year, you can see we're nowhere close to this major bottom back here. But uh, hopefully we've seen the worst of it here and these will continue to move higher. And what about the buying and selling pressure for treasuries? Well, this is an interesting picture. So if you look at this, we have a price dropping here, but you can see that the selling pressure is also declining, right? And then recently, the price for short duration treasuries has just been shooting higher. What about intermediate treasuries? Well, not quite as definitive, but if we start here, you can see that the, the selling pressure has been declining while the price was dropping. This is a divergence. This tells you that things are likely to turn around, and they in fact have, and the price is going higher. What about long to intermediate treasuries? Seven to 10 year, intermediate to long, I guess I should say. 
And you can see a very similar picture here. There's a, a, a somewhat of a decline in the selling pressure while the price was dropping. And what happens is that then the, the selling pressure runs out and the price starts to turn higher. What about 20-year treasuries? Well, again, somewhat of a similar picture here. A slight decline in the selling pressure while the price was dropping. And now the prices have started moving higher. This is very encouraging to me. And what about that inverted yield curve? Well, let's just take a look right here. Let's jump right to it. Uh, the inversion has been greater than minus 30 basis points. I forget where it was last week, but now it's at minus 29 basis points. And you can see that the blue line, the dark blue line, which is where we are now, is almost where we were exactly a month ago. So this has improved a little bit, but not a lot. Let's take a look at the Fed rate monitoring tool. Well, after Chairman Powell's talk, you can see that the markets really feel pretty solidly that there will be no rate decrease when the Fed meets in June during their next meeting. Now, if we go to July, there's a little more likelihood the markets think that there might be a rate cut. And then it's not until we get out to September that there's more than a 50% likelihood that the Fed will cut rates. Now, if we get out to November have to believe, yeah, it, gets, it just gets better as you go further out in time. But nobody really knows, and the markets will change their minds between now and then. In fact, you could even see a situation where by the time we get close to this meeting, that this comes way down and this comes way up. That's what I hope happens. Probably unlikely, but that's what I'm hoping. Like and what about gold? Well, gold, uh, boy, um, I wouldn't want to be in it right now. You can see it had a very nice rally. But while it was still rallying, you can see it was going up here, you can see that the selling pressure was also moving higher. This kind of divergence spells real trouble for the price of gold. In fact, you can see what happened. It peaked out here, tried to peak again, and then really started to fall. Now, if this selling pressure continues to increase, I really fully expect the price will continue to decline, and it won't be a good place to be in unless you're short. And what about Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin, you know, we had a huge rally back here off the chart. And then ever since it peaked out back here, it's just been on this kind of gentle decline here. And I don't like what I see happening. You had the, a pretty good price increase back here over the last couple of days this last week. But look what's also happening. The selling pressure is shooting higher as the price is moving up. This kind of divergence isn't healthy. And unless this turns around, uh, if the price continues higher, I would be getting out of Bitcoin or even shorting it. But uh, it's still a little bit early here. We'll see if this selling pressure turns around and heads lower next week, and maybe the buying pressure moves higher. If there's one thing to take away from my market reviews over the past several weeks, it's that the equity and bond markets were skittish and on edge, as you can see here, when the stock market was dropping. But now, over the past couple of weeks, it's starting to look like things could be turning around as this moves higher. This is why I caution you to be an investor rather than a trader who tries to time the markets. Investments and investing aren't that complicated if you know how to allocate your portfolio without destroying your returns and getting little to no protection from downside risks. As an investor, you need to take the long view and allocate according to your risk tolerance rather than fretting about what's currently happening in the world or what everybody else is doing that you read about in the media. Uh, with their portfolios. If you want to be a better investor, I discuss how to allocate your portfolios in two key videos linked in the pinned comments below, titled The Ideal Portfolio Using Just Two ETFs or Mutual Funds and The Ideal Portfolio Using Individual Equities. Again, link in the pinned comments. Until next week, I'm Calvin Rose. And thank you for watching Invest Smarter. That's all for now. Stay up all night, gotta work now. 
Make up my mind and it turns around Say that I'm fine till I burn out Thinking this money sounded so nice Life feels like the sunny water Wasn't gold proof Packing my bags like it's all true Hard to make friends when I'm focused On all these bars that I'm holding I like the cold but it's lonely, yeah This life feels like the sunny water I'm a pain. 